Alright, in this next segment I want to show you how to create a traveling mat such as a selection of this eye in order to then modify it and for instance change its color or perhaps even make it dark altogether, make it go away. Uh, we could also have it perhaps filled in with uh, color from another image or from another animation. So there's tons of different possibilities. Uh, the big challenge of course is to create a selection that will adjust to the shape of the eye as um, the character, or in this case our kitty, is moving around and moving his head. And uh, we want to make sure that it's uh, doing as much as possible and a good job of following the shape as it's moving around. That way we can use that as a selection to render filters into them, to paint into them and so on. Alright, so that will be some of the more advanced features of the new curve tool in PD Pro Howler 7.1. Let's get started. Alright, so let's continue here. I'm gonna start with loading the AVI file and that's be right here in the animation menu, load AVI. And I will find the original which is right here. Alright, so this one is the one that we converted using what was it, WinFF. Let's get this one. It's got about 600 frames, uh, 613 at 1280 by uh, 720. Pretty big. And it's probably going to need about 2 gigabytes of RAM. In fact, if we use Control Shift Escape, we can see how much uh, memory it's currently. Yep, almost 2 gigabytes there. 1992,000 kilobytes. Um, I'm on the system Windows uh, 7 with 64-bit. Uh, and I have 8 gigabytes of RAM on this particular system. 8 cores, 8 logical ones. And here's the kitty. So one thing we want to do is define an area of interest like this eye or this eye that we want to track if it's moving. And it sure does because I recorded this unfortunately with, or actually intentionally, <laughs> without image stabilization and not from a tripod. So it's got a little bit of motion but on top of that she is also moving her head a little bit. You see how her eyes are moving from left to right. And so what I'd like to do is show you with the new curve tool how you can create a curve that lines uh, up with the uh, area of interest like the eye and how to keyframe that and then how to use that sequence of keyframes and in fact automatically track it to uh, to do that. Now just for the purpose of this uh, first uh, look at it I'm going to do uh, this on a very simple case so I will simplify this entire animation. In fact um, you know what let's let's go find a portion let, let me load a different one that's uh, much much shorter it'll probably have just 30 frames or so just so we can go through the basics quickly and then we'll go back to this one and do this in a bit more detail. Alright, so here is the same video, just a little bit shorter. I cut off a few of the frames at the beginning and a few hundreds at the end. So we have just this tiny little, what is it, about 116 frames. And I'm going to go to the curve tool. There it is. And so what I'd like to do is basically outline this eye here. So I'm going to uh, use my control and shift key to click around and zoom in with the thumb wheel with the right button right? so you can get a good good look at the eye here and identify exactly what it is you want to select and then you just start drawing um, let's click here in this portion first that would be this one actually let's move it in a little bit so there you go you don't want to go into the white <clears throat> there you go, make a sharp turn, so maybe we need two, now now if it's too close it will think we just want to move it, so we want to do perhaps drag, click one on the side and then move in. And you notice my curve is already closed here, uh, you might start this way where it's not a closed, cur uh, closed curve initially. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's a trick to remember if you're in need of placing a point next to one that's already there. If it's too close, it will think that you want to move the one because it latches onto that. So what you do is you just click away from it and then move it back in. Tiny little trick here. And then <clears throat> let's go and... In fact, you know what? I'm not going to do too many of them because this is the first look. So uh, what we need is just to understand how it works and then we can refine it a little bit later. Um, so I'll do a few more up here. Go along the eye and then we'll close it. So let's click to close, there you go. So we may have one or two too many here. Let's go perhaps uh, delete the single point. Let's delete this one and this one. Yeah. 
Let's go to the move tool so that we can move the points a little bit, the existing ones. Here we might actually need to bring this curve to the inside because uh, that part here shouldn't change color. The, the whole idea, the goal here is to, to make this greenish looking eye perhaps more of a reddish or a bluish one, right? Or, or do something to it, make it brighter, make it darker, higher contrast, less contrast. Whatever it is, you want to have the ability of changing, running some filters across this not just on this one frame, but across the entire frame sequence of your video, of your animation. And that's what we do with rotoscoping. So, before we can do that, we need to identify a mat that will select that. So that's basically the process. Right now I'm laying, lay, laying out the, the, the curve that will identify what area of interest we're talking about. All right, so, now that I've done that, I'm going to keyframe this. Right here, keyframe it. Okay, and so we have a keyframe at the beginning and one at the end. Now here it's off. It uh, it lost it because the eye is moving. The camera was shaking. The the kitty was moving around, looking around with the eye. You see there. So it's not on the curve anymore, and that's not a big problem because we are now going to use that new tool, which is the assistant, the motion tracking assistant, the motion tracker will do some really cool stuff. Uh, wait, let me let me zoom in a little bit here. And uh, do that again. Where is it? There. Yeah. Okay. What I'm going to do is show you what it's actually doing. For each of these points, it's going to place a motion tracker on it. Each point of your curve. So there you go. So now in the motion tracker, you can change the size. You see in red these boxes and then also the other boxes, the bigger ones around it. Right, so what is this? The motion tracker works basically on an area of interest that you identify. This is the, the red box there. The block in red identifies what image you're looking for to identify that particular block there. And then another one here, and another one here. So each of those red blocks make an area of interest that identifies where that center point is. And then, knowing that frame for frame it's going to possibly move, we need to give it some room to look for, how far to go out there. And that's what this one is, the search area, that's the second slider, allows you to say how far you want to look for it. And that's really important if you have very, if you have a great amount of shaking, if it's a, a very shaky video. But it's going to take longer to find it if you look out in a big, bright area. So, so if you can identify kind of a range where it's not, it's going to go faster if you have it in a smaller search area. But of course, it might also not find it if you suddenly have a big jolt and its block is moving out of that. All right. So, with that in mind, we'll go and let it run. So, what's what's happening now is that it's it's looking for it frame by frame as the video is moving and it's trying to keep the position of each of those points where they need to be in order to track. And you notice here how the curve changed. Okay, It did a pretty good job in this one and sometimes it will fail or sometimes it's not going to be able to track it all on every frame. Right now I'm actually trying to keyframe every single frame of my 116 frames through the animation. Not all of these will necessarily be perfect. In a perfect world it would but we'll probably have a little bit of noise and a little bit of adjusting to do. Uh, this one here is actually not too bad. It seems to be flattening as it needs, and we're done. Uh, let me clear the uh, selection mask here. And so we now have a sequence of keyframed curves. Look at that. Changing according to the shape. See how it's kind of con convex here, bulging to the outside? And when when the cat looked to the other side, right there, it, it did the right thing. It moved to the inside, it, and it tracked it. So that's an interesting feature, the motion tracker that you can use to identify a particular area of interest as it's changing across the frame sequence of your video. And why would we want to do that? Well, because first of all, now we can also have this use, use this curve as alpha already flagged here. That's why we have the selection mask here. So as we tell it to use the curve as an alpha, as you know, as a selection, we can also give it a little bit of a blurring or a little bit of uh, softening there, maybe a little bit more. And with that, you can see, for instance, if you look at the selection and grab it there with store alpha, you can see what it found. And that is basically the selection that we need to use perhaps for improving the contrast, changing the color and all that. But it's changing every frame. So it's adjusting to changing every frame here. 
Now, if, if it's doing a good job, we won't need to do any fine-tuning work here, right? We're done. Uh, the motion tracker did it, the, the assistant did it really nicely. But there may be cases where some of these points go off. Like, like for instance, this one here, maybe we need to adjust it. Well, just grab it. See, right now, because we have keyframes in effect, in the upper left corner, you can see that some of these are blued out. That means we cannot use them. But this one here, the move, we still can. So we can actually move it around here, and this one here, and perhaps this one inside a little bit. There you go. And then that way we can keyframe it right there. So that allows us to do some corrective adjustments there. Same for this one. And that might be the tedious part. Occasionally you'll find cases where you need to do a little bit more tedious work than you want. But you know, what are the choices? You don't want to do everything here automatically. So it's good to have, I mean uh, manually, it's, it's good to have the automatic, automated process to help you with initially. Alright, so uh, I'm going to skip some of that fine tuning because at this point we understand how that works. And the next step of course is then, well, well how do you actually do something with it? I mean, you could go to the filters right there, where the animated filter is, and say fill it with a color selection of some sort. Or uh, do some other things with it, like render uh, a brush along the path, which could be a smearing brush and it could do something around there. But in this case, I got the uh, selection on it, right? I got the, uh, the curve rendered into alpha, and therefore, I can now use some of the animated filters in the animation menu, right there. And that would be, for instance, the timeline and with the timeline editor we can go and for instance find the color add or the color adjustment and add more red and you see it here in the preview okay or we can go here we can also pick the color right there and that color will be essentially rendered only through the alpha channel so if you for instance want to turn this I really reddish or let's turn it greenish right so we add we reduce the red we keep a little bit of the blue but we add a lot of the green right you notice that it's doing this yeah, that's a good way look at that okay it's it's doing that only on this eye because the alpha channel selects it it's a traveling mat all right and now I'm going to do a save undo just in case I did something wrong and I regret it. I want to have one level of undo for my entire animation sequence here. Let's go render that puppy. I'm sorry, kitty. And <laughs> and and then after that we might do something else. Maybe we want to um, reverse the selection uh, so that inverse the selection so that we can do something else on the outside of it. So so the eye we can change color. Maybe the outside we can make darker. Or let's make the eye actually higher contrast or brighter. So we'll do another selection here. So we have the green eye now. Um, what I'll do is I'll make it a little bit brighter. Let's go value adjust like so. Yeah, this looks good. Let's go render that. I'm feeling confident here. I'm actually going to undo, uh, remove the undo. So that goes a little bit faster. And you know that's where you take the risk if you if you uncheck this box and you do not save the undo levels, um, the images as they are being rendered and changed, well, you run a risk that what you did cannot be undone. So if, you, uh, if you're not really sure, you want to first run it through and test it and verify it and, and then say, yep, yeah, that's good. All right, so at this point, um, that basically concludes this quick introduction to uh, creating a traveling mat. I'm going to now clean it up, which is, um, you know, you could go and clear all the frames, but that also does not get rid of the alpha that's still there so we might want to go and clear that we still have the curve here and because it's still flagged as um, rendering to alpha it will render that the moment I, I go back to this frame um, what I should do really is get rid of the curve altogether and you can do that right there so up here in the upper left corner you got still an option to start over with the curve that also kills the keyframes and of course one thing we might have wanted to do is to save it in case we needed to get back to it later on. Alright, so that's it for a quick intro and first look at how to use Traveling Mat. Obviously once you do this and you decide perhaps you want to show this on a website but not at the full size, right here 100% this is maybe too big, so what you might do is perhaps resample it as a whole video. We can do that right there from the image menu, resample, and if you need it really quick you don't need the highest quality. Let's go nearest neighbor or bilinear and we'll say half the size. So it's now a 640 by 360. Let's render that. And then perhaps one more thing we could do after it's done that conversion 
in size. We could also perhaps improve the colors all over the balance a little bit here. There is a, a expanse dynamic range. It's not doing much here because it's already got very dark to very bright so there's not a whole lot more to do. But uh, that's it for the starter to how to use traveling, how to create traveling paths and how to use them.